Hello and welcome back to The Coffee Break. This is a series that I do where if you, my lovely audience, uh, treats me to a nice cup of joe, whatever, um, I sit down, have a cup of coffee with you and talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you don't specify what you want me to talk about, I talk about whatever I want to talk about. That's kind of how it goes. Them's the ropes. So uh, this coffee today is brought to you by KK. He bought me actually five coffees, so I had to squeeze five coffees into this cup today. Um, he says, your tutorials are amazing. Love your work. Keep on creating Azure Terraform. Whoop, whoop. No brakes on this train. Thank you so much, KK. Um, really appreciate the, uh, the coffee. And uh, yeah, uh, let's enjoy our coffee break. I'm here at the, uh, the Notary Hotel in uh, not so sunny Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania. Today, when thinking about the topic, because, uh, you know, I didn't really have, uh, anything to go on, so I just thought about some, de some decisions that I've made throughout my career, for better or for worse, and I thought I'd reflect on them. And one of them was, um, you know, whether, you know, like, how long you should stay at a company, um, especially in technology, right? Um, I mean, some, the, 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 the old guard, so to speak, old, old, older industries, more legacy and not legacy, but like more staple industries, like non-tech industries. <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words, right? Um, you know, I, I think historically, um, you would stay and you would rise in seniority, just like when people would naturally retire. Um, you know, I think, think this happens a lot in insurance and things like that as well. Uh, insurance, banking, etc. Like basically, you want your jobs, you want your uh, boss's job, right? Their your boss wants his boss's job or her boss's job, and then like basically, it's a matter of if somebody screws up and and it becomes open, or if somebody just retires and gets old enough, and that can be a pretty bad situation. Um, but in technology, it's not really like that, right? I mean, in technology, it's less about how long you've been doing something and more about like how well you do something or how much you can do of something uh, as compared to other people, right? The, I think the term 10x developer um, is trotted around like, and I think that's a thing, you know, and that's not a knock on, you know, um, you know, if you're not a 10x developer, it's just the reality that like, um, I mean, if you go on, <laughs> it's kind of funny, like, you go on Twitter or something, and there's, like, these gifts of people doing these ridiculous, like, this chef that can just, like, toss ten pizzas at once. There's just some people that are just naturally gifted in ways that, you know, they're just very strong in the force. Like, what are you going to do? Like, that's just how they how they were born. And it just clicks, and they can just sit down and just mash out a bunch of code, right? Um, so I think it's definitely a thing. And so, because in technology, there has historically been this meritocracy, right, where there's certain things that are valued, skills that are, that are, that are, that are uh, high, in high demand, right, like you know a certain thing that nobody else knows, um, productivity, which is, um, you, you can just mash out, like, high quality code, you know, in, uh, in a short amount of time. Or just high quality code in general, right? That, I think that goes into productivity. Like, e even if it doesn't take, even if it takes you maybe longer, but the quality of the code is better, um, I think that, that also plays into productivity as well. Um, cause it would take somebody who pumps out really crappy code very, very fast. It might take them much, much longer to produce, produce the same quality, um, in the same amount of time. Um, and then the third aspect that uh, is valued is communication, right? Which is like, ever present in technology. Like when um, we need, like in office space, that guy that's like, I take the requ I'm a people person, dang it. I take the requirements from the engineers and I give them to the, to the, to the business people, to the customers, right? I mean, it is a joke, right? Like, what do you do here, Bob? But like, there are, um, engineers, developers that rise in rank, maybe not out of technical, any sort of technical prowess, 
um, but just their ability to communicate complex ideas to, you know, people that need to know it, like business stakeholders, business subject matter experts that are like influencing the functional design of a product, etc. Um, it's important to be able to help them understand like what the technical constraints are, what's feasible, what's not feasible. Um, and then to be able to take, you know, work together with them to come up with a design that, that's feasible, that has the requirements that uh, meet the business's needs, and then to take that back to developers to help the developers understand like what what we're doing here, like why are we doing this, um, what's important, what's not important, and things like that. And um, I think folks that have that as their superpower tend to rise in managerial ranks, right? Whether that's you know good or bad, um, and they end up leading teams, right? Folks that are extremely productive, right? That uh, have a that also have this technology, you know, kind of communication ability. Um, they they often become senior ICs, right? Um, maybe like distinguished engineer types, right? Um, and so, like, really, in technology, historically, we've had we've done a pretty good job of meritocracy. It's like never have I heard anybody say, "Well, you know, we we kind of have to wait for old old Bob in the corner office to retire before we can promote you, Mark." You know, like I've never heard that. Um, it's always been, "Do we have a business case?" And, and I, for a large part of my career, it's been in consulting, right? So that's code for. Um, can we justify your bill rate on the open market? <laughs> right? Um, if you're build, if you're in a technology company like Microsoft or something like that, the business case would probably be like, hey, do we actually have work for like this level of person to go do, uh, that we can justify the cost of like a principal or a partner, um, to go, to go lead a team to go make this, make this thing? Um, if there's no business case justifying your existence, they're not gonna pay you the big bucks, right? Um, so it's really, um, you know, I, I think it, it seems like it, it, it makes sense. So then the question is, how long do you stay, right? If you're not waiting for Bob to retire, right, uh, from his corner office, like how long should you stay at a company? Now I've seen, I've seen people, um, on opposite ends of the spectrum. I've seen, like you, you can go on LinkedIn. It's an amazing thing. Like you can really get kind of the zeitgeist of somebody's career path. Um, just by looking at their LinkedIn profile, assuming it's true, um, which I think LinkedIn's trying to fix that in case there are people that are squatters that just sit on companies and roles that never existed, um, which is completely unethical. Um, but I have run into that. But assuming their LinkedIn profile is accurate, right? Um, you know, you'll see people that, you'll see people that maybe have never spent more than six months at a company, right? And maybe that's just because they worked for a consulting company because they sliced their resume up. Um, they showed every client that they ever had. Because in consulting, that's a thing. Like you will, you'll probably, certain, depending on the type of work and the type of consulting, um, and the type of projects that that company, that consulting company can do, you might only, you know, be with a client th three months, six, three, six months max, right? Um, I don't think that's a great thing. Um, personally, and we'll get to that later, but, um, but that, that is a thing. Um, now that, that also, uh, doesn't all accurately reflect that the fact that they had uh, presence at an, at an institution at this consulting company for a long time. So I think people that, that just show their client history, you know, they have this very utilitarian view of like, I only want to show what I've done. Right. I think that might be a little short sighted because they're selling themselves short. They're not they're not showing like, hey, I was, I was an anchor at this consulting firm. You know, yeah, I did all these projects and I did all this wonderful work for the customer on behalf of the customer. But I was a present. I was, a, I was, I was a presence. I was a known commodity at this consulting company. People relied on me. I was, uh, you know, part of the sales process. I was part of the people management process, right? I mean, that is part of you know, your zeitgeist as a consultant. Um, and I don't, I don't think it comes out like if you, uh, just only show client work on there. So I think that's an interesting, 
thing to, you know, kind of something that kind of maybe you're not getting the whole picture, right? But that being said, there are absolutely people that probably have only spent one year at a company, right? And I've even heard of people that have this number in their head, which is really interesting. Um, they, whether it's one year or two years, they're like, okay, um, I've been here for one year. Uh, it's time to start looking. And this comes down to their philosophy of, well, the more I change jobs, every time I change a job, the more uh, higher pay I'm going to get, right? And, you know, that, that may be true. Um, you know, you might get an extra nickel, an extra dime, um, you know, whatever it is. I, I don't know what it is. You know, 5%, 10%, 30%, who knows? But, but yeah, you might get like a little bit, a little bit more money every time you jump, jump ship. But, um, you know, I, I think jumping ship too often denies you certain other intangible aspects of career development, right? Um, establishing, your, establishing yourself in a community. Right. And you, it's, I know, I know the utilitarians out there are going to be like, Oh, come on, Mark. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't need community. I just show me the money. Show me the money. Right. But bear with me. Okay. Establishing, your, establishing yourself in a community, in a culture, right? An organization, a company is a community. It's a, like, it's people that all work together for common cause. And there are, there is a culture, right? And like getting to, you know, getting deep into that culture, getting to know those folks, um, and, uh, you know, working with them to actually solve problems, right? There's, there's only so much you can do in 12 months, right? Like, can you do meaningful work in 12 months? R truly meaningful work, like do big things. I don't know. I, 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 I I'm not going to say no, but I think it's really hard, right? Just because like big projects, you know, tend to, you know, maybe the bulk of the work is probably 12 months, but there's project initiation phases, there's project closeout phases, and those are probably three months each, you know, maybe sometimes three to six months, right? And in those phases, you know, you're doing some very important thought leadership of, you know, how to bootstrap a project. And then, like, at the big, at the onset, like, how do we, how do we, create the team how do we create the pyramid how do we like of like who's going to go do the work how do we organize the work how do we make sure that this project's set up for success the all of these you know project onset activities happen at the beginning and then you know that takes 3 to 6 months and then you have the big project 12 months of work just people crushing it right and right there like if you're jumping ship every every one to two years, right, you're probably going to be, you know, sending your goodbye letter halfway through the project, right? Um, and then likewise, like, at the tail end of the project, there's important work that happens there, which is, you know, what do we do with this thing now that it's done? Do we transition it to the customer? Do we transition it to, um, you know, a long-term operations team? Um, is this, you know, do we have to find the people that are like, do we scale down the team to like the actual DevOps team that we need to operate this thing? Um, again, thought leadership, organizational leadership type, you know, experience that you're going to be denied if you like, you sent out your goodbye letter halfway through this thing. So, um, and that's why I think like if you are going to stay with a company, um, you know, you, you probably, you probably want to give it a few years, right? Assuming it's a good company, assuming you're happy, and assuming like, you know, they're treating you right, right? I would much rather, you know, um, deliver value over like doing a money grab and trying to grab every nickel on the ground, right? Um, so in my career, I've always chased value, value creation, not, you know, how, how can I like, maximize my my wages right i think now that, that am i some sort of like altruistic like uh popper who doesn't value money absolutely not um i like getting paid uh like some people say i would show up for work even if i didn't get paid i look at those people and i go nope <laughs> i mean let's be real like i i could do a, i could like 
working is trading money for time, right? Or trading time for money. Um, if, if I, you know, didn't need the money, if I didn't want the money, uh, if I didn't think it would benefit my family, I wouldn't be showing up for work, right? Um, now, do I enjoy my work? Do I love my work? Absolutely, right? That's, that's a win-win, right? I get paid, I get to do work. But like, uh, if, if they stop paying me, I don't think I'd be showing up. I'm just saying. This ain't Star Trek. Anyways. Um, but, I, but I think like, um, a good, a good period of time to really like grow professionally is to stay at an organization at least four years. I, and, and that's, some people's eyes might pop out of their heads and say, four years, holy crap, that's a long time. That's like four, that's like four times longer than I've ever stayed at any company in my life. But the reality is like the different projects that are going to start and stop ebb and flow at this company. Um, the, the, it's not like you start the company, boom, you're, you're, you're at the initial start phase of a project. You might get, when you join the company, you might join the tail end, you know, of a close, a close out project. And it might take a good six months of just doing that wrap, wrap up work before the next big project comes along. Who knows how long, long that might take. So, you know, four years uh, at, at an organization gives you the opportunity to get, to, to take on one of these, like, to position yourself at the right, be at the right place at the right time, to take on these big projects, um, and be at that, you know, kind of experience the project initiate, in, initiation phase, execute that project all the way to the end, and then close out, right? Um, and I think the, it's just the immense amount of valuable experience that you can get from seeing that end to end, um, is, is tremendous, is absolutely tremendous. Um, you can get it at a consulting company, so don't feel like, so don't feel like, um, you know, uh, you know, that you, you have to like go native or something like that, but you have to pick the right consulting company because like some consulting companies are just not oriented to long-term project work like that. Others are, um, but yeah. So, um, you know, some people stay 10, 15 years and I, I think that's great. Like if, if you love the place, they, they're paying you right. They, they, they reward you. You have a, you have a good work life balance. Stay forever, you know, um, go for it. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I think these job hoppers, um, are a bit short sighted in what they're, what they're truly missing out, you know, of kind of being a presence, being an anchor at, at an institution, um, and being able to see large and significant work, um, not just see, but like actually do it, participate in it, lead it, you know, end to end from beginning to end. Uh, I think, I think you're missing out on that stuff. So that's what I would say. Um, anyways, um, wrapping up my coffee here. Thank you again, KK for the, uh, for the lovely coffee. So, um, until next time, uh, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off. Thank you.